Hi there, I'm Ryan. And I'm Reagan, and we're the co-founders at Vayer Watches. Today, we're going to be providing an inside look at our American assembly process. Uh, really excited about this one. Uh, American assembly is a really, really central part of our story and our brand. So it's, it's awesome to be able to pull back the curtain a little bit and show you guys exactly what it means when we say American assembly. Yeah, we've dealt with a lot of comment trolls over the years who've challenged the significance of our American assembly. Some going as far to say that, you know, it's just putting on a set of spring bars or a set of straps. I think this video is going to be a fantastic opportunity for us to show those folks out there just how complicated and intricate the assembly process is. Yeah, so uh, breaking down the video, Ryan's going to kick things off by speaking about the pre-assembly process, the kitting, the organization that goes into it. I'm going to take the middle of the video talking about the dial and the hand installation, and then Ryan's going to close things out by uh, running through the uh, casing, the movement regulation, and the water resistance testing. So without further ado, let's kick things off. Before we get started, one thing to make mention of is that most clips in this video are going to be of our D5 USA Diver, which is an automatic watch using a Japanese-made Miyota movement. Just keep that in mind, as this watch is an automatic, so the steps involved will be slightly different than for our C3 and C5 Fortress watches. For the most part though, this is a great overview of what assembly of a Vare watch looks like. So, one of the most important steps of the assembly process is pre-assembly, which mostly involves getting organized. The first step is actually sorting and receiving components in packages and then kitting them. That really involves opening boxes and preparing matching sets of components, grouping cases, crowns, dials, hands, and movements together by corresponding line and model. Once those things are kitted and organized, one of the first things that we do within the United States is build what we call SCC, or stem crown combos. This is what you're going to see in the first stage of the assembly process here in the video the cutting of each of our stems to match a specific case. So in this case, we're prepping crowns and stems for the D5 diver. We have a specific size that every single stem needs to be cut to to exactly fit the case and movement. This machine here is enabling our technicians to replicate exact cut lengths at scale. While this step could be done by hand, and in the early days we did do it by hand, the machine here enables our technicians to replicate exact cut lengths at scale. The process by hand is incredibly meticulous and time consuming, and this machine is one of many efficiencies that our team has created over time in order to improve the overall process. An important note is that the pre-assembly and kitting process is all done outside of the actual assembly room in order to reduce any exposure to contaminants from the shipping process. Tiny debris from shipment packaging can cause a headache in the assembly process, so all of this is kept separate from the environment where watches are built. The actual assembly of watches takes place in a temperature controlled clean room with laminar airflow. Technicians are also required to wear lab coats and specific footwear to further reduce any external contamination. Assembly is the final critical step to bring together a set of intricate pieces that have taken months to produce, and doing it correctly takes precision and care. Our team has spent time and money to invest in the equipment and processes to compete with the best standards in the world, and it's something we're incredibly proud of. All right, well, Ryan's provided a pretty detailed explanation of our pre-assembly process, explaining the importance of kitting the watches and building stem crown combinations. Next up, I'm gonna jump into the first steps of the actual clean room assembly, specifically the dial and hand installations. I'll also provide some details around our quality control or QC process and why it's so important to our manufacturing process in general. Once we enter the air-controlled clean room, the first assembly stage is going to be attaching the dials to the watch movements. In many ways, a watch movement is like the engine of a car, and our assembly process is basically a series of steps building around this engine. It's a bit of a side note here, but I think it's worth restating that all of our US assembled automatic watches use Japanese-made movements. While we love to use US movements, the reality is that the American watch industry was completely offshore during the 20th century, and there simply aren't any US-made mechanical movements that compete on price or performance with Swiss or Japanese options. This lack of specialized manufacturing infrastructure is one of the biggest impediments for us creating a true made in USA automatic watch. While we have introduced US built quartz movement options for our C3 and C5 models, unfortunately the other major blocker to a made in USA claim is the FTC stringent and some might say uncompetitive source origin requirements, which are much higher than both Switzerland and Japan. Getting back into the actual assembly stages, we can see here that the tech has two trays on either side of our station, one with dials and the other with movements. 
In order to attach the dials, the technician needs to remove very small screws from the movement, position a circular dial spacer under the dial, and then reinstall the screws locking the dial in place. You can see in this clip that the tech is using incredible caution to protect the watch components. Unlike a lot of retail industries where huge margins are baked into the cost of goods and most raw components are seen as pretty disposable, at Vare, the parts and pieces of each watch are extremely valuable and take months to produce. A small smudge or scratch at this stage could cost the business hundreds of dollars and so caution and control is incredibly important. As you can see from this video, the ability to maintain control over such small components while working efficiently at scale takes real talent. If you've purchased one of our watches in the past, hopefully you'll feel a small sense of pride in helping support this type of craftsmanship with a new generation of watchmakers. For me and Ryan, I think it's definitely one of the coolest parts of our American assembly process. Once the dials are attached to the movements, they're set in a tray for the first assembly QC check. QC is done for the exact same reason, we use a clean room, lab coats, air filtration and finger cuts. Making mistakes with US assembly costs a lot of money. QC helps us catch issues early and make the most of our technicians time. In this clip, you can see the type of issue that might be caught at this stage where you have a small fiber embedded under the 12 o'clock index. This watch would fail QC and be cleaned before moving on to the next stage, which is hand installation. Installing the hands of a watch is definitely one of the more challenging steps of our assembly process and basically involves stacking the hour, minute, and second hand onto a very small pin protruding from the movement through the center of the dial called a pinion. While it's impossible to see without magnification, there's a microscopic ball joint at the end of the pinion that the second hand locks into. Once the hands are installed, the tech will test out the hand alignment by rotating the stock factory crown and making sure that the hands are aligned properly and that there isn't any friction or tension between the hands and the raised indexes. The technician will also work to ensure the hands are sitting as straight as possible and are completely perpendicular with the pinion. The friction from poor hand alignment can put undue strain on the movement and ruin a watch's accuracy over time. For this reason, the added checks and inspections done at this stage are incredibly important for both the aesthetics and technical performance of the watch. Once the dial and hands are properly installed on the movement, we have essentially created a working time-telling device. The remaining assembly steps are about protecting the movement and dial and making sure it will keep accurate time through extreme outdoor conditions. You can have the best interior components on the market, investing in a movement that costs hundreds of dollars, but if you have a poorly assembled case or faulty gasket, the entire watch will be compromised in real world usage. You can see in this video that the technician is working to insert the movement and dial through the open back of the watch case. This technique is commonly referred to as backloaded assembly and is the standard practice for quality watchmaking because it allows for the entire watch to be removed through the case back if repairs are needed down the road. Many mass market fashion watches and luxury brand knockoffs avoid backloading cases because they're more expensive and they require a more sophisticated case design. Instead, they tend to top load their cases, dropping everything through the dial opening and installing the glass crystal as a final step. The problem with this approach is that you need to break the crystal to repair the watch, making top loaded watches throwaway items meant to be replaced rather than repaired. Obviously, that is not our vision for Vare. We build our watches to last for decades, and a big part of that means that they need to be easy to repair and maintain. In addition to the backloading design, our rigorous water resistance standards add additional requirements to the casing stage. Both our 10 ATM and 20 ATM watches use screw down crowns and case back, and leverage extra thick rubber gaskets at all openings to ensure an airtight seal. Near the conclusion of the casing stage, the technician will reintroduce the stem crown combinations we saw at the beginning of the video. Once these are attached, the watches are essentially complete and only need to pass a final QC, water resistance testing, and for our automatic watches, time rate testing and regulation. While a flawless assembly is critical, ultimately, owners are going to judge their watches based on how good they are telling time. Our C3 and C5 quartz watches, which are powered by the US sourced AmeriQuartz movements, offer near perfect accuracy, with a standard rating of minus 10 to plus 20 seconds per month. Mechanical and automatic watches like the ones seen in this video and preferred by the luxury watch industry are far less accurate. Even $100,000 movements used in the rare Swiss concept watches are rarely capable of surpassing Swiss chronometer or COSC certification of minus four to plus six seconds per day. For that reason, movements need to be tested and regulated at the assembly stage to ensure they offer a competitive timekeeping standard. 
Our USA assembled automatics, like the D5 model shown in this video, are all guaranteed from minus five to plus 15 seconds per day. It's important to keep in mind that this is the outer bounds of our regulation standard, and many of our automatic watches achieve and surpass the standards for a COSC grade. While COSC is seen as the gold standard for mechanical accuracy, in many ways, it's really just a marketing label for Swiss luxury brands. Wow. The certification alone costs hundreds of dollars, which is why almost all value-oriented micro brands opt to handle regulation in-house. That said, a COSC level Veyer regulation standard is something we may introduce on higher price models, or as an optional additional cost in the future. Once the watches are guaranteed for accuracy, the final step of the assembly process is water resistance testing. There are a variety of ways of testing a watch's resistance rating, and interestingly, few of them involve the use of any water. Instead, the most common method is a dry pressure test, which uses sophisticated equipment to artificially generate extreme air pressures inside a vacuum. The red equipment shown in this video is one of the most expensive pieces of kit in the assembly facility and allows us to not only test multiple watches at a time, but to also test the cases to the very limits of ocean diving depths. From our own experiences with overseas suppliers, the water resistance ratings provided by Chinese manufacturers often fall short of their stated ATM ratings. Not only do they lack the top tier testing equipment, but they also tend to test watches by pulling a few samples out of a larger batch. While this can work, if you have limited expectations around in-water usage, for Veyer, use in the water is a critical aspect of our product value, and it's critical that we're able to test every watch for its true depth rating. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to the channel. We're constantly trying to produce new content and put it out. Also, please take the time to comment on the videos. Reg and I love the comments. We love seeing the discussion and we love interacting with all of our customers. Thank you.